Hey, what's up guys? It's Kay Jones here coming at you with another video. It's been a while since I've had a video on my channel, so sorry about that guys. Just working full time and everything. So previously I have made a warding blog video on my channel in regards to when warding first was brought up at RuneFest, which was last October-ish, I believe. So a lot of things have changed since then, and Jagex has tried to take in a lot of what other players have been talking about and recommending. They've been reviewing a lot of players' um, opinions on warding and what they could do to improve the skill because a lot of people didn't like it, and that was very clear. And then they brought out a more con con like condensed blog, I guess, or a more a blog that was more specific. And people didn't like that either. So basically they failed, 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 and nobody liked what they were presenting and didn't basically want a new skill in the game, which I totally get it. I don't want that either. I think it's it would make a dramatic difference to old school RuneScape and could potentially move the game from old school to something else and lead to a lot of other things which has been my main concern and a lot of other people's. So I'm going to go ahead and get to the point here. Uh, this is going to be a longer warding blog than my original one because I'm actually going to go through the blog itself, warding blog. It's going to be just a longer video in general because on my last video, people were like, dude, you didn't read the warding blog, yada, yada, yada. And I did. I just didn't want the video to be 30 minutes long. But I think it's important to go in depth with, through this because it's been what eight nine months since the skill was first presented and so i'm going to go in depth with what my thoughts are on what jagex has presented to us i also want to mention that jagex said that they would do a beta allowing players to test out the warding skill if it passes or if it doesn't pass i, I don't know they're just going to provide a beta um, before I get into this blog, I will say that I feel like warding is being shoved down the old school community's throats. At the same time, I can appreciate Jagex wanting to improve an idea that they've presented and trying to make it what the community wants. But it kind of reminds me of Dragon Claws. I don't know if y'all remember, but Dragon Claws failed polls like three or four times, maybe twice. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it was two to three times. It was still multiple pollings because people said no. And yet it still passed. It, I mean, it, it, people said no many times because the skill, it did not pass. People did not want Dragon Claws in old school RuneScape because they thought it would affect PKing and all types of stuff. And eventually, Jagex just kept re-polling it and uh, eventually it passed. I feel like if you continuously re-poll or bring up a topic, eventually it's gonna pass. That's not the point of polling. Polling is a you do one once type of deal. And of course you can try to improve it and re-poll it. But most people don't have the attention span to keep up with something like this. And eventually they're just gonna be like, damn it, fine, whatever, sounds okay. And I don't think that's the right way to go about things. But I can appreciate Jagex putting a lot of time into this and trying to improve RuneScape. And a lot of people like to say, well, if they don't do this new skill, y'all are just going to see old school RuneScape die out. No, we are not. We have a new Grandmaster quest coming out in literally like a week, dude. So whoever's like, you're going to see this die out. Come on, guys. This game has been doing wonderful with its updates without a whole new skill being implemented. I remember RuneScape changed a lot after Summoning came out and even changed more drastically after Dungeoneering. So that's why I'm really hesitant on a new skill. But let's see what they've presented and I'll go more in depth about it. So the whole idea of warding is presented behind the idea, well, we can make leather through crafting and we can make uh, metal armor through smithing, okay? So if we can do combat armor through smithing and we can do leather range armor through crafting, we should be able to do magic arm, magical armor through warding, which I will say that that's clever that they're trying to keep it in the old school make sense of it all type of deal, which I can give them tribute to that. 
But as we go deeper in this blog, you will see why I disagree with a lot of the topics that they have presented within this new skill that they want to bring into the game. So they removed a lot of things from previously, which I believe was fantastic. They removed a lot of different topics like battle wards, venomous armor, and just a bunch. It was way too complicated. And I really like how they minimali minimali minimalized everything uh, to make it more simple, which I think was a huge problem um, months back with the uh, original blog. Um, so I would like to first get into the dissolving. That's the one thing I do agree with with warding is with breaking down previous armors. It looks like when in this blog they're saying that you can do magic robes, trim robes, break down leather armor, trim leather, hats, masks, cloaks, banners, plate mail, metal weaponry, all that kind of stuff, which I think is a great idea. Will it be a make or break it change to the game? I don't know. Removing a lot of that alkable stuff is very good for the game. Ward shops, which, eh, I guess it makes sense. I don't know why we can't just make ward shops part of rune shops. You know what I'm saying? And another thing, why can't we make all of this part of the rune crafting skill? But whatever, I'll get to that later. Monster killing and hunter. They're saying you can get a lot of those silks and new supplies from hunter, which I think that's a great way to go about it if the skill does pass. Um, I'm hoping it won't, but you know, bringing in silk moths and all that type of things. Uh, that would spice up Hunter a little bit, especially if it allows you to train another skill. It, it makes people want to train Hunter so you can train Warding, especially Iron Man. They said, the first poll question, should we add the core skill Warding to the game as described in the blog? The core skill will come with the introduction quest similar to Ruin Mysteries. This question does not include new armors, rewards, and other content. This is basically an overall question saying, do you want warding in the game? As in the whole idea aspect of it, if you take in making magical armors, etc. It's a good idea, but the reason why I say no to warding overall, just from this general question, is because it's not original RuneScape. Magical armors, magic, you're supposed to be like a glass cannon. You don't have much of armor, you just have cloth on you but you do massive damage, but you also take a lot of massive damage. So if you're able to make all these great, great uh, armors and that they can protect you and have all these buffs and stuff, you're kind of taking away from the glass cannon effect that Mage has always been. Mage has always done stupid amounts of damage and you take a lot of damage though. It's a give and take relationship. So that's why it's always been a great range type of, uh, you know, wilderness, do mage from afar, and then you start meleeing or ranging and whatnot. Uh, just because the magic bonus gear is not takeable, and really there's not many armor options, which I kind of like about RuneScape personally. I think it has the nostalgia, which is what old school is all about. So the whole idea of putting warding into the game to make magical armor, I completely disagree with that. I don't think it's needed. Um... I even think that we have plenty amounts of magical armor. Old school doesn't need to be complicated. We don't need a piece of armor for every little buff and here and there all the time. So on that overall aspect, that's a big no for me. But let's still go in depth and really try to give this a go. And I do want to say that I will play the beta if the beta does come out. And I will try to give it, uh, I really will try to think on Jack X's point of view and say, hey, thank you for taking the time to do this, but this is why I don't like it, or this is why, hey, this could be a potential thing I'm interested in. So now they go around magical armors. They said it's only fitting that we include new armors, and this is where it kind of lost me. They're bringing, talking about new sets like the Pado sets with plus three prayer bonus with each piece and plus three prayer overall and how, you know, you will increase magic damage on hellhounds and demons by 25 percent which i think is ridiculous but i mean magic is expensive ruin wise so it makes sense i guess but it's just not needed um and you le learn it from a monk all this other stuff and i'm not down for that piece of armor to be added to the game we already kind of have mage armor with good prayer bonus and that's like the cloaks and robes there's a gothic cloak zamorak ropes 
our cloaks, sorry, and Sarah Doman cloaks. So we kind of already have that. So why are they trying to implement this? And plus 35 prayer? Oh my gosh, like, what about monk robes? Don't we have purpose for monk robes? Like, you're defeating, you're making dead content. You're making other stuff that already has use. It's going to become dead content by just trying to stuff new stuff into the skill. And it says, if question one passes, should we add the ability to ward the Pados set with the warding as described in the blog? This set would require 30 warding to make. 30 warding for plus 35 prayer. That's better than monk robes. What the hell are you thinking, Jagex? Hell no. That's a big no. Archaeus robes. This is kind of interesting, and I kind of like Archaeus robes. Out of all the robe crap that they're gonna, they've brought up, Archaeus robes makes the most sense to me and would be the only set of robes that I would bring into the game. Um, they would be members only, and they'd be a little bit better than Shades robes. That's acceptable. They're not overpowered. They're nowhere near as good as Arams or Mystic or anything like that. I think that's good, and they would mimic the look of Archaeus robes, um, and basically that's it. I mean, they would just be a little bit better than shade robes. And I think that's fine. I think that's a great little cosmetic ad without it being really powerful. It's just kind of fun fashion scape. Nothing wrong with that with a little bit of magic booze. If question was passed, should we have the ability to ward the Archaea set with warding? It would require 40 warding to make. That's all good. I like the Archaea set. I think that's a good idea. Sorry, my bird is playing with her. Sorry, I had to put the bird up. All right. So now they want to mention a Thaumaturg set. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's like Thiamuaturgy. Thiamaturgy. I don't know. It's freaking harder to pronounce than Arduin. But it says this set will offer one unique effect when the pieces are all worn together. Basically, reduce a tick when casting a spell. Uh, so you're going to be spell casting a lot faster. One tick of a difference is a huge deal. It will only apply to combat spells and it will not apply to any spells in the ancient spell book, which thank God that would be OP as shit. And it would be, there would be some, uh, shield slot being worn. Uh, it would make the tome of fire unusable, which makes sense. I don't like this. I don't think it's necessary. One tick faster. Yes, do you have to wear the whole set? I feel like this would end up being dead content. I don't know why. I feel like, yeah, one tick quicker is really good, especially in PvP. Um, you could probably utilize that. And then I think it wouldn't end up being as good as everyone thought. It would be that type of thing. And it says if question one passes, would being able to ward the thermo Thama Maturge set with warding. It would require 50 warding to make. No. Blood bark armor, which basically this armor is an improved version of split bark, and it's a tank style armor with similar defensive stats to Adamant. So it's not that OP tanky, but it's too tanky for mage. I mean, come on. Anything past black armor and mage kind of makes me a little salty unless it's like ancestral or something no i don't think we need to improve blood bark armor i think if i just i don't like it i think all these freaking armors are stupid like not necessary dead content but the rk stuff makes sense with the lore i mean come on that shit's cool look 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 that's cool like come on Wish we could float like that, too. Put that in warding. Make your character float like the Archaeus bitches. Anyway, that's a no. No to the blood bark. This one makes me the most upset. Dragon high robes. This is a high-level member set only robes. Aim to sit between ancestral and arams without any defensive bonuses aside from magic. It requires 70 magic and 30 defense to quit. Equipped, it would mimic the look of robes worn by some character in the game and the member of the Dragon High Order. No, 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 no. And I'll tell you why. It requires 65 warding to make. That's it. 65 warding. To be better than Arams and almost as good as Ancestral. Are you kidding me? I have put over 700 hours in to my Iron Man, and I don't even have full Ancestral. 700 hours in raiding, not saying the whole account, just raiding alone on my Iron Man. 
This account that I'm on right now, 700 hours in Chambers of Zarek 1, and I don't even have full ancestral. And you're trying to bring a piece of armor that requires 65 warding to make to be better than Aram's and almost as good as ancestral. Is that a joke? And Aram's, by the way, that's very hard to get in an Iron Man, and it's expensive on a main. And it is like Barrows is supposed to be that top tier armor. This made me so upset, and this makes me realize that Jagex has no idea what they're doing when it comes to the game. This should have never even been something in the blog. This was a huge mistake. You're just triggering an Iron Man, and you're triggering veterans when you see that. Do you know how many hours and how much money it takes to get for mains to get Ancestral and Arams? And now you're wanting to put something with 65 warding to be almost as good as Ancestral. What's the point of me putting 700-something hours into raiding and I don't even have full Ancestral just to make something with 65 warding that probably takes like two days if I really wanted to? That, that's a joke. No, Astral Armor, it's like Lunar Armor, but looks better and has a little bit more if or get maybe a little bit better that's fine i don't si see the difference like that doesn't really affect the game much it just seems like dead content soul bark armor a uh, better version of the blood bark armor I already said no to blood bark armor so you can imagine how i feel about this armor let's just move on uh other warding pl plans to do things with other items like uh, imbue rings like warrior ring treasonous ring basically imbue rings which nightmare zone does now i agree with this i don't like nightmare zone so anything to improve nightmare zone i'm all about um so i would say yes if warding passed i think the whole ring imbues is good but how they would remove it from people who have already spent hours in nightmare zone to imbue their rings i don't know Skilling rings, ring of wood, ring of earth, ring of amber, ring of bone, ring of iron, basically improved skilling as in you get X time the chance to receive double logs, you get X time the chance to receive double allotments, X times the chance to receive double loot or scales or anything. I say no, that's easy escape. You're making the game easier. I think just no, I don't think that's necessary. And plus we already have, kind of reminds me of ring of forging. Like we just, just, stop this is not rs3 let's not make things easier um it's for more profit i don't think it's for more xp but i mean come on i don't think that's necessary they're just looking for stuff to add to the warding skill repairing essence pouches i agree with that warding should be able to repair essence pouches so you don't have to go to that dude in the abyss elemental tomes now they were talking about bringing in air water earth fire tomes sure i don't see the problem and why it would hurt but i feel like tome of fire is so valuable because of what it can do and fire is always the most powerful skill so fire bur like fire sp spells are more powerful than air water and earth is there really a point to bring tomes in for those um, I don't see anything wrong with that though. Magic incantations. I don't think these are necessary. Basically, an incantation is a held in the ammunition slot and increases, increases magic bonuses. Um, kind of like you know how blessings increase your prayer bonus. An incantation would go in that spot and would increase your magic bonus. I don't see anything wrong with that, but. They seem to have a lot of magic incantations. They have like six, and that's a lot. Why can't we just have like a high level one? Uh, Anti-poison lamp, it basically you fill it with anti-poison potions with all varieties, requires 20 more warding to make. Every time you're poisoned, you, you don't become poisoned, but it takes an anti-poison potion sip out of the lamp or whatever this reminds me very uh this reminds me of the serpentine helm but for low level players i don't see anything wrong with it just seems like something they're trying to push into the skill there's nothing wrong with it but isn't that what serpentine helm is for but i guess it's good for lower level players Ruin pouches, basically they want to add more ruin pouches than what's already in the game. A large ruin pouch would be an upgraded of the regular ruin pouch that we have now, which is four slots instead of three. I think the fact that we already have a ruin pouch and that was never in the original runescape to begin with, so it holds three slots of ruins, I think that's enough. I think when we start adding four slots and all this other kind of stuff, 
it's just a little bit too much. Um, but if that were the case, it would require 83 warding to make. Makes sense. I mean, I'm thinking more like 90 plus warding to get that one extra slot. I think four slots is OP. I think three slots for a rune pouch is OP. But if you're going to add another slot, make it 90 plus warding. Don't do this 83 warding crap. Um, wilderness rune pouch, I guess it hold, this is like something you can only use in the wilderness. I don't see anything wrong with that. But like I said, it just seems like they're trying to add stuff to the blog. Elemental rune pouch, it stores two types of elemental runes. So basically it holds two slots of runes versus the three which we currently have in the game. It's like the lower level one. Scroll of redirection. Uh, basically you're going to be able to make these through warding. If warding comes out, that's a great idea because currently you have to buy that through Nightmare Zone. Nightmare Zone fused essence pouch where you combine the small, medium, and large essence pouch into one essence pouch. That's a good idea. Congratulations, Jagex, for thinking of a good idea that I think would be wonderful. Uh, it would require 85 warding. That seems very fair to me. Mystical Sleuthing is a mini game they've mentioned. It doesn't really say the rewards. It does say that you would be getting one third the ex warding XP rates doing this mini game than if you were actively training warding. So one third is a lot less and it dep if the rewards aren't that great, I don't see the purpose of the mini game. It seems like dead content and you would receive no more than 5k runecrafting XP an hour, which seems kind of low. I think they could push that to like 15k and it would be okay. Um, and they didn't really bring out rewards for that. So that would be a no to the mini game because it seems like dead content because they haven't presented any rewards to that. And they're saying it's one third of the XP per hour. I could understand if it was like a half. So if half of what you would get actively training warding, that makes more sense. A warding guild, I say no because not every damn skill in this game needs a game needs a guild. I think older skills like wood cutting and fishing, they deserve guilds and uh, farming, that makes sense, especially farming because of crops and everything like that. But not every skill needs a guild, especially not a new skill. It has not earned that title yet, in my opinion. So that's a no on that as well. So that's the entire warding blog. Overall, as you can see, majority of the blog, the poll questions that are to come out is a big no for me. However, that being said, there are some good ideas in this blog and I think it could be definitely implemented into rune crafting. Um, I think it would give rune crafting more spice than just making runes. It would allow us to combine pouches and, you know, add some cool magic armor or stuff to the game, um, like the Arceus um, robes, which are harmless and they're just really cool looking. Um, but yeah, that's a big no for me on most of everything. I hope y'all found this interesting and you kind of got my insight to it all. I'm not against a new skill in the game, but I think that when you bring a new skill into old school RuneScape, you have to be so careful. Which Jagex is being careful? I just don't think a lot of the people who work for Jagex, I don't feel like they're veterans. I don't feel like they've played... <laughs> I've played for 14 years and I've played over many accounts and I'm almost I'm working on maxed on my Iron Man and I cannot tell you the amount of hours I have put into this game. Jagex employees, the majority of them have not put in the amount of hours as many veterans in the game. And I think that if you're gonna hire people to bring out blog ideas and etc, they really need to understand the game. Uh, and when they bring out questions like something between ancestral and dragon hide, like that that was a big no to me, and it made me really recognize the fact that Jagex doesn't really know exactly uh, what it's like to be a player who plays hundreds and hundreds of hours of RuneScape and probably takes the game way too seriously. Uh, but I think that's why streamers are great, and I hope they send more streamers over to the United Kingdom, people who play every day for a living, and hopefully they'll get some good insight from them. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel for my future videos and be free to share this video if you enjoyed it. Bye, guys.